enough when you're sick and in need of medical care. It's even worse when in the midst of that, you have to fight with the insurance company about what they will and will not pay for. For today's Tech Action Thursday, Jean Ransom, the CEO of MedKai, joins us with what to do when you find yourself up against an insurance company. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right, what is MedKai? MedKai is the Maryland State Medical Society. We represent physicians here in Maryland, and we've been around since 1799. What are, how often do you all deal with people who are saying, I can't deal with my insurance company? And what are the types of things they're fighting about? We, we hear from physicians and patients constantly uh, where things are denied. Uh, they say essentially we, there's a certain standard set of complaints we hear. Fail first policies where the insurance company says, before you can do this procedure or use this drug, you have to do something else first. Mm -hmm. They say something isn't covered. They say it's a non-covered service. Uh, we also hear sometimes that it's not medically necessary. And it's interesting that you mentioned you hear from physicians, too, because they go up against them as well, trying to get procedures done. Well, physicians will often fight for their patients and fight with the insurance companies for them. Sometimes patients get frustrated with the physician, but usually they realize the real person denying the mm -hmm. care is the insurance company. So if you are one of those patients, what do you do? How do you take on the insurance company? Well, one of the things we did, because we've had so many of these complaints, is we worked with the Attorney General's office to set up a website called Insurance Watch. Mm -hmm. And you can go to our website, www.medchi.org org and you can file a complaint through that portal and send it right to the Attorney General's office and they have a health claims arbitration unit uh, that will actually uh, try to review and work on these things and work as an advocate for the patient with the insurance company. When people are fighting this way, I mean, what, what the impact on their health and on what the physician is able to do for them? I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's got to be significant. It's incredibly significant. It's significant to the patient whose concern or primary concern should be their health mm -hmm. and not whether or not the insurance company is going to pay for something. And it's difficult for the physician who spends incredible amounts of time dealing with insurance company bureaucrats instead of helping their patients. All right, well, we're going to get you to stick around because I'm sure we probably have viewers who have mm -hmm. questions. They've mm -hmm. been through this and have experienced it. So right after the break, Jane Ransom um, with Medkai is going to be back to take your calls about what maybe you can do when your insurance company turns you down. So if you have a question, our phone lines are open at 410-481-4545. You can also send us a tweet at Fox Baltimore or go through our Facebook page. You're watching Fox 45 Morning News, all local, all morning. We are back with Gene Ransom, the CEO of Medca. He's taking your calls about what to do when insurance companies deny your claims for our Take Action Thursday. So if you have a question, give us a call. The phone lines are open at 410-481-4545. You can also send us a tweet or go through our Facebook page. Our first caller is Robert in Owings Mills. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. What's your question? My question is, I was diagnosed with cancer some time ago, and the conventional treatment had little chance of hope for me. I decided to go to an alternative clinic, and my insurance company refuses to pay for the alternative clinic because they seem the, the treatment as being um, experimental. Okay. How so, do I get them to pay for this treatment? Well, th this is exactly what I was talking about, where they're saying something's a non-covered service or it's not medically necessary. Uh, what I would, it can be very difficult at times to get these types of services treated. What I would do, uh, Robert, is I would file a complaint uh, through the appeal and grievance process. And if you go to Insurance Watch, you can fill the forms out or we can follow up with you and help you do it. But if you file a complaint with appeal and grievance saying that this is medically necessary, it's possible that the state could order them to do it. And, and I would suggest that would be the best course of, course of action for you. All right. Well, good luck with that, Robert. Douglas in Baltimore is on the line. Hi, Douglas. How you doing, Patrice? We are great. What's your question? My question is, I currently have a wisdom tooth that has gone bad. It's now made mm. tooth number 16 go bad. And I've been going on a runaround all month trying to get this insurance to cover it. And I'm just getting, you know, told over and over again, you know, call this, what this procedure has to be done. Now, now, this is probably a dental insurance issue rather than a health insurance issue, but the, the principle is pretty much very similar. Again, we're talking about something where they're trying not to cover the service. And again, I would suggest that this is the perfect type of thing where you want to file that appeal and grievance complaint, and okay. we can help you do that. It's very easy. It's through the Attorney General's office. All right. Well, let's go to Facebook. Jake wrote in and said, what do you do when you are stuck with workers' comp insurance who won't let you get treatment, and your private insurance company says no because it should be workers' comp? And this is something 
something we hear a lot at the society about, and it's called coordination of benefits. Okay. Because oftentimes, if you're in a car accident and you have a workers' comp claim, you have insurance that, that would cover it, mm -hmm. but then also you have health insurance. Now, typically, your health insurance, you can be billed to health insurance, and then they can subrogate between okay. the two. So it's able to be worked out typically by working with the insurance company, and usually the health insurance companies will work with the patients on this. And it shouldn't just be not done. It's, it's, yes, it should clearly just not patient. be done, right? All right, let's go to Nikio on Facebook. She says, how long do you have to wait for a pre-authorization to go through? I'm fed up with health insurance companies. It consumes my time. Yeah, pre-authorization is a major issue. Many insurance companies require pre-authorization or pre-certification for certain procedures. One of the things we're working on with the Maryland Health Care Commission is making all those electronic. We aren't there yet. This is a major source of complaint okay. for physicians and patients. It takes so much time for them on the phone trying to get mm -hmm. these things approved. Um, again, I would suggest this is the type of thing we're filing a complaint until we get those electronic portals up on pre-authorization is, is a good thing to do and we can help them do that. All right, let's try and quickly get to this last question mm -hmm. here. Kathy says, I get caught in coding issues mm -hmm. all the time. The insurance company says it's coded incorrectly and won't pay. The doctor says it is correct. Frustrating. Yeah, coding is very frustrating. Now, typically, though, the person who doesn't get paid when coding isn't correct is the physician's mm -hmm. office, not the patient. Um, and typically, the way to deal with that is to work with the uh, physician's office and we can help do that because okay. it could be that the physician's office is making a mistake um, and we can work with them on that. And they want to get paid so they'll oh, get it they'll right. they'll get it right, yeah. <laughs> they figure that out. All right, Jean, All right. thank you so much. That's Thanks. very beneficial.